Socotra is the collective name for a small tropical archipelago in the Indian Ocean, 400 kilometers south of the Yemeni coast. This group of remote islands has only recently been rediscovered by the outside world. When we talk about Socotra, we talk about a جزيرة تمتلك قدر كبير من الخصوصية ومن الجمال وحتى الغموض المثير للدهشة والمثير أيضا للبحث والغوص والتناول الواسع لمكونات الجزيرة المختلفة. Very little was known over the last decades what was going on in Socotra. So in the mid 90s the first studies started again revealing enormous biodiversity on this island. Socotra is, as we know now, one of the ten most important oceanic islands in terms of number of plants and animals only occurring on Socotra. Of the island's 825 species of flowering plants and ferns, 37% are endemic and cannot be found anywhere else in the world. The terrestrial and freshwater fauna also exhibit a high level of endemism. In some groups, endemism exceeds 90%. Regarding birds, with the exception of the Yemeni highlands, Socotra has the highest level of endemism in the Middle East. We had here more than 100 95 of birds recorded until now. Eight of them, it's endemic in this island. And also there is more than a nine endemic subspecies of birds in the island. We often make a comparison of Socotra with other oceanic islands where there's a lot of endemism, high numbers of plants and animals that only occur in that specific location. But there's one single thing that singles Socotra out from all these other uh, oceanic islands, and that's that mankind is here for already a very, very long time. We don't know exactly how long, but at least two, three, maybe even four thousand years. In this location, with all the prints you see here, very much testifies this long presence of people. There are other sites on the island as well that testify the long presence of people. There's a cave in the northeastern part of the island that is where people from what is presently Pakistan and India came 1700 years ago. Today, the Socotra archipelago is home to some 43,000 people. Many of the inhabitants are semi-nomadic pastoralists, or herders, who live by raising livestock. Goats, sheep and cattle are an extremely valuable source of food and income, and also the main measure of wealth and status. <laughs> Date palms are also a measure of wealth, and for many, their cultivation is an integral part of life. For generations, those who lived on the coast relied on the sea for their subsistence. Otto Mantaleb, a local fisherman, tells us about their former way of life. Africa, 
الحمد لله الناس طبيعية وهادية وكل شيء ومرتاحة ما شيء ضيق ولا شيء أزعج. The local people belong to more than a hundred different tribes and speak a distinct, rich and sophisticated language, Sokotri, though Arabic is commonly used in the main towns and villages along the coast. The Sokotri language is characterized by a rich poetic culture. Poems are sung to communicate and reinforce ideas related to everyday life. حارهم عايشين المنحاشر المنطود على عاشر الزمان علي بجا بيشن وعد جناس لعيد شن برا الحجرة حراتا عاد حلت شلتهدن قيدة معيشين من الجبن قير بالحلت من الديوزن وتان قلب حوش طيبة بجن وال المزرعة قينة مجن ديفا نصبع وجيري في ديفان تترين مجاهم Socotra is one of the few places in the world where conservation started at a very early stage in 1997 the Yemeni government declared the islands a special natural area requiring protection and the Socotra Conservation and Development Programme was founded. The island's conservation zoning plan was endorsed by presidential decree in the year 2000. The zoning plan divided the islands into four management zones, nature sanctuaries, national park areas, resource use reserves, and a general use zone where more intensive human activity is allowed. One of the major achievements of the last decade has been involving the local people. The program now employs a staff of 50 to 60 Socotrans and Yemenis who are able to manage the program and deal with a wide range of complex issues on a daily basis, with only limited help from the outside world. Despite all conservation efforts, the Socotra archipelago faces many challenges in achieving ecological, cultural and economic sustainability. One of the biggest challenges it faces is unplanned or inappropriate development. When, in 1990, Yemen was unified, Socotra became all of a sudden part of the outside world. In 2000 also, the, the airport was opened, road construction started on the island. Quite a number of people come in, people come in from the mainland. The number of tourists has uh, increased. Compared to the, to the 90s, there is much more pressure now on the environment. Improved accessibility has attracted outside investors some with little understanding or respect for the island's natural and cultural heritage. Many uh, business people have jumped to this island and to work here without any plan, without any future idea about the environment. Though improved accessibility has increased the number of visitors and made regular deliveries from the mainland possible, these advantages also increase the risk of importing alien species and diseases. This could bring devastation to the island's flora and fauna, as well as the livestock on which many Socotran families still depend. The Yemen government is doing its best to conserve the island, but it needs help. There are many examples of the commitment of Yemen for conservation of Socotra. One of them is the issue of road. The road to Kalansiya was planned to go through the Datwah protected area because it's the easiest and shortest way. When we raised the issue to the road authority, they were resistant to change the road and they continue to build it toward the protected area. So we raised the issue to the president and the president sent a committee and then he came by himself to the island and decided that we were right and he diverted the road at a very great cost to the government of Yemen. So this shows that the government of Yemen politically is committed for the conservation of Socotra. But this also needs to be communicated to the middle management and also we need coordination because even people with goodwill, they can do bad damage 
by not co coordinating and communicating what they are doing. One of the biggest challenges is to use Socotra's resources in a sustainable way. We had a, a problem with collection of coral stone from the beaches of Socotra. Most of the goods that comes to Socotra comes from Arab Emirates. So many small ships or dhows come to Socotra to bring goods. And instead of going back to Arab Emirates empty, they were taking coral stone as cargo and ballast also to balance the, the boats and sell it there for Sharjah to build its old town. This, we discovered, was creating a threat to coastal lines in Socotra and maybe also for live coral because people start to dig live coral so they can sell it. We contacted the authorities in Sharjah and we asked them to stop buying the coral stone. But also we had a directive from the government of Yemen banning the exportation of coral stone. This creates problems, of course, because the people who are benefiting from the coral stone are angry and they are very poor. So we had set up a program to compensate them. We have many people who come because of the resource of limestone in the island. Most of the island is limestone. They think that they can build a cement factory or they can have a big quarries for marble. And this creates some resentment because we told them that this island is too precious to be developed in this way. Socotra Island is more important for its biodiversity than anything else. Another challenge that uh, Socotra Island is facing is the livestock issue, especially goats. Of course, livestock, goats and sheep and cattle have existed for thousands of years in the island. But through the ages, Socotri people have been able to create a management system for their livestock to guarantee a balance between the range, plants, and the livestock. The challenge now is because of the changes in the economy and the society of Socotra that this ancient system is breaking down. And this might create a big problem for livestock management and effect of livestock in the plants and trees of Socotra. We see that, that essentially there's no regeneration, there are no young trees on most of the island. It's only in the upper mountains that you see this regeneration, plus on some very steep hills, on cliffs, where you see it. Now, it's not very clear why this regeneration doesn't take place, but it is rather sure that grazing of livestock plus the effect of climate change plays a major role. What we are doing and what we're trying to figure out is what are the measurements we can take? How can we change it? How can we make sure there are new trees for the future? So we're trying experimenting with closing off areas against goats. Now that has shown over the last few years to be not very successful. Other measures that are taken is propagating some of these trees and replanting them